In this chapter, I want to showcase how you can make use of network security groups by Terraform. So you can actually attach network security groups either onto your network interface or onto the subnet that is holding your Azure virtual machines. This is like adding actually kind of a firewall at a network layer onto your Azure virtual machine. This can be used to filter the inbound and the outbound traffic. By default, in our deployments, we never had a network security group in place. So we can actually create a new network security group as part of our Terraform configuration. And then we can attach that network security group onto our network interface. So now I want to show you manually how you would have network security groups in place. So in the earlier chapter, we had deployed the web server role. So this web server is installed on the Azure virtual machine and it actually listens on port 80 for HTTP requests. So here we are making an HTTP request via a browser onto the web server. So the web server will listen on port 80. Now, if you go on to the virtual machine, if you go on to the networking section, currently there are no network security groups in place. When you don't have any network security groups, by default, all traffic is allowed onto the Azure VM. Normally, you will have network security groups in place to kind of, you know, enhance the security of the Azure virtual machine because you can then filter the inbound and the outbound traffic. So let's create a new resource of a network security group. Here, I'll create a resource. I'll just hide this. Yeah, I'll choose a network security group. So I'll choose that. I'll hit on create. Yeah, I'll choose my existing resource group. I'll just give a name for the security group. It will be in the same location as my Azure virtual machine. Contacts, go on to review and create. And let me go ahead and hit on create. Let's wait till this is complete. This will just take a minute or two. Once this is complete, I can go ahead on to the resource. Yeah, I can go on to network interfaces. So I can associate now this network security group with our network interface, that's app interface. I'll hit on OK. Once this is done, if I go back onto Azure Virtual Machines, here now, if I go onto the networking section, here I can see now inbound port rules. I can see outbound port rules. So now we have a network security group that's attached onto the Azure Virtual Machine. Now, if I refresh this page when it comes on to the public IP address, now what happens is, let me just close this. So it's opening up a new Edge browser and going on to the public IP address. Now you will see that you will not be able to access the web server that's running on the Azure VM. And this is because of the network security group. Now it is actually filtering the traffic that is flowing onto the Azure virtual machine. After some time, you will see that you will not be able to reach this page. So in order to ensure that you can reach internet information services, you have to go on to the networking section. You have to add an inbound port rule. So this is for traffic on port 80. Here you can choose the service of HTTP. You can scroll down. You can leave the priority as it is. You can just give a name that you're allowing traffic on port 80 and then click on add. So we have now the rule in place. It just takes a few seconds for the rule to take effect. Now, if you go on to your Edge browser and if you try to refresh the page, now you can see the home page for Internet Information Services. So what are the key steps that we followed? First was to create a network security group. There we have to ensure that we have a rule that allows traffic on port 80 and then we attach the network security group onto the network interface. So these are the key steps. So as always, let's go on to all resources. Let me go on to the network security group. Firstly, I'll go on to the network interface. 
Yeah, let me click on the network interface. Yeah, let me choose this particular item and let me hit on disassociate. So let's disassociate the network interface. Let's delete the network security group as well. And let's create or perform all of the actions via a Terraform configuration file. So once it's done, I'll go on to the overview and let me hit on delete to delete the network security group. Now in our Terraform configuration file, so I'm just leaving off at the part wherein we have the custom script extension in place. We had seen this earlier on to install internet information services. So now here I'll insert the code. The first is the resource creation of the network security group. Again, we give the name for the network security group, the location and the resource group. If I scroll down here, I'm giving the name for the security rule. I'm just giving a priority. So earlier on, we had given a priority of 100. You can give it as 200 as well. Here, the direction of traffic is inbound. So this is an inbound rule. And here we are allowing traffic on port 80. So this is a rule that is being defined within the network security group. Then you have to create a new resource that is known as a subnet network security group association. And here we have to mention what is our subnet ID. So let me just remove this to ensure that we have the proper subnet ID in place. So I'll just scroll on to our resource definition for the subnet. So it's Azure RM subnet dot subnet A. So let's go down. So dot subnet A and dot the ID. Yeah, we need the network security group ID. That's this one over here. Let's also add a depends on clause to ensure we add a dependency on our network security group. Right, it's app underscore NSG. I'll just save this. Now let me go on to the terminal. Let's create a plan again. So this seems to be fine. Now let's go ahead and apply this. So I can now see that this is complete. So this will perform the same actions. If I go on to my Azure virtual machine, if I go on to app VM, if I go on to the networking section, here I can see a rule for port 80. I can see the network security group in place. And if we go on the overview and if we take the public IP address and we go on to a new tab, so we can see internet information services. Here the only thing is that we have done the deployment via the use of a Terraform configuration file.